Welcome back to the Go Engineer YouTube channel. I'm Kaylin Jack and I am a PDM specialist at Go Engineer. In this video, we will talk about adding new SolidWorks PDM users. Before we get started, please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. In SolidWorks PDM, users must be created so that they can access and navigate a PDM vault. Each vault will have a set of users who can be unique to that vault or also exist as users in other vaults. In SolidWorks PDM, there are three types of logins we can use. The SolidWorks PDM login, Windows login, which is for SolidWorks PDM professional only, or LDAP logins, which again is for SolidWorks PDM professional only. This video will cover the first two login types, the SolidWorks PDM login and the Windows login. We will start with the SolidWorks PDM login. If you're using PDM standard, this is the method you will want to use because the other two methods require PDM Professional. If we are using the SolidWorks PDM login, we can add new users through the administration tool. We will open the administration tool and double click our vault to log in. After we log in, we will look for the users node. Here I have users and groups management and nested under that we can see the users and groups nodes. If you are using older versions of PDM, note that the users and groups will be listed as separate nodes. If we expand users, we can see our current list of users. The user we would like to add is not currently listed here, so let's add them. To do this, we will right click on users and click new user. Here a new PDM user can be created for the vault. After selecting new SolidWorks PDM user, we can enter a login name. I will use the first part of the user's email address. Click OK, and then we can fill out more information about the user if we would like. I will add the user's full name and the email address. I will assign a password as well. And if we want, we can add user data, which can be used in data cards or in file properties. And if we want, we can copy permissions and settings from another user. I will not copy permissions and settings because I plan on adding this user to a few groups, and this user will get their permissions from those groups. When we click Next, the new user's properties dialog box will open. Here we can define even more information about our new user. We can add an image for the user if we would like, and I will enter the first name and the last name for the user. Here we can assign additional email addresses, and we have space for more user data. This is helpful if there's any additional information that we would like to store about our users. And again, we can pull this information into the data cards and file properties. We will type the company name and a department as well. And when we're done filling out the information here, notice that we have permissions on the left that we can assign. Again, my user will get their permissions from the groups, so I will skip adding permissions here. Let's add this user to a few groups next. If we select groups, we can assign the groups here. The way I have my vault set up, all of my users are automatically added to the all users and machine shop groups. I also want to add this user to the engineering group, so I will click add and then select engineering. We have check marks next to each of these groups indicating that they are a part of each of these groups. We could always uncheck one of these boxes if we no longer want that user to be a part of that group. We are happy the way it is, so let's click OK. And now we can see the new user listed here. If we ever want to make changes to the user, we can double click on the user to open their properties again. Users can change their own password here as well assuming that they have the permission to see the administration tool. And that's how you would add a user if you're using PDM standard or if you have PDM professional but you're using the SOLIDWORKS PDM login type. If you do have PDM professional, let's take a look at how we can use Windows users as our login method. The first step is to open the Archive Server Configuration app. And we will click Tools, and then we will select Default Settings. This is where we set the login type. By default, the login type is set to SOLIDWORKS PDM, but if we want, we can change it to Windows. We can also set if we would like them to use automatic login using their Windows information. 
and we can choose if we will also allow the SOLIDWORKS PDM login. If we go to the Security tab, we can see what level access our groups and users have. There is a section for administrative access and another for attach access. Most users, we don't want to give them administrative access because then they can add and delete vaults. Most users just need attach access. And let's go back into the Login tab, and we will click Settings. And here we can add more users or groups. Be careful to type the group or username exactly how it appears in Windows. And then we can click OK. We are happy with these settings, so we will click Apply and OK. And then we will open the administration tool once again. We will log into our vault, locate our users node, right click, and choose New User. This box is currently empty, but if we select List Windows Users, then our Windows users will be added to the list. And now we can select one of these users. And these fields are currently grayed out, but that's okay. If we click Next, then we can add that information here. I'll leave most of these fields blank for now, and let's go to the groups, and we're happy with these two groups here, so we'll click OK. And our user is now listed here. And notice that this user has a little blue circle indicating that they were added using the Windows login. We can always delete users by right-clicking on a user and choosing Delete. Note that these steps are simply to add the user to the administration tool, and as a reminder, there are two other steps that need to be accomplished before the user could begin using SOLIDWORKS PDM. So SOLIDWORKS PDM will need to be installed on their computer, or an existing SOLIDWORKS installation can be modified. The other step is that a local vault view will need to be created on their computer, and this can be done using the view setup application. In the description of this video, I have included links to videos on these topics if you need help with these steps. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions.